Well, hi, everybody. We're coming to you tonight here from Eulis, Texas, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's been a beautiful day here. And I'm glad to have this opportunity to, to come tonight and share what the Lord would give me for you. So, Father, I thank you tonight for this opportunity to share your word and your truth. And I pray, Lord, that you give ears to hear, understanding hearts, Lord, out there, and even the vision here to see, not just to see on the screen, but to see in the spirit, Father, tonight, in Jesus' name. I felt impressed tonight to, you know, continue to talk uh, more about deliverance. And I know that a big thing uh, about deliverance that people don't understand and it's simply the fact that what is it for? Is it for demoniacs? Is it for just for women bent over in the synagogue? What is deliverance all about? That's so misunderstood. After all these years that I've been in this ministry and doing this ministry, uh, I just realized after all these years, people still don't fully understand what it's all about. And I've talked about it. I've talked about how Jesus emphasized deliverance. If I, if I would say anything he emphasized about his ministry, number one, of course, is the kingdom. He said, I came to bring the kingdom. And then number two is deliverance. Casting out demons was a major part of his ministry. And I think he's really meant it for us too, but it's just been completely ignored. And people have turned away from it and said, well, that's for certain situations. But I found out that every Christian I've ever met has demons. And I didn't know after I was spirit-filled, truly born again, radically born again, radically filled with the Holy Spirit till what a rush. And I was as sold out to the Lord as I could be, 40 years old. I didn't know I had demons. Wouldn't have believed it, I guess, except the Lord spoke to me. And I began to learn, I began to be, believe what he said. I began to hear him after I had the Holy Spirit. I used to think that I heard God, but I didn't. So I say to any of you out there, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues if you're going to go on in this ministry. This ministry of deliverance, of casting out demons, is for believers. Believers, I mean true, committed believers, especially feel spirit-filled, more, it's, it's who it's for, more than anybody, okay? So, I want to talk about that in light of rejection and the revelation that the Lord gave Frank and Anna Hammond years ago. And I was very close to these folks. They were like my parents, spiritually. As they explained this to me, I realized that the Lord gave them one of the most critical, essential revelations about us and what we need as far as deliverance and healing is concerned than anything I've ever seen all these years. And I've been around. I've read a lot of books. I've been to other countries and so forth. And I don't think I'm naive. I've been always looking and believing for the truth. I've prayed, Lord, I just want your truth. I have no reputation to defend nothing. So as I share this tonight, I know some people push away from this because of the, of the two hands and so forth, but please don't do that. I, I don't have time to begin to explain all of this. I'm just going to do an outline thing here tonight, but I know this, that every person that's come to ministry here and to me personally, I end up if they really are serious, sitting down with them and going through this as much detail as possible. Because I know this is from the Lord, and I know it's a, a exposure of what Satan really does. And let me say this, the main thing about deliverance is, is God's desire for our personalities is to be holy and righteous and walk in truth and in love. And without deliverance, I don't think anybody, not anybody, can really walk 
in agape love. Because I found out and teach, it's a supernatural love. And you just can't go off and do it. I thought I could. The first ministry I really had years ago was called Agape Fellowship. And I, there was not much agape there. But I realize now that that's the main key of deliverance is to get us free enough to be able to agape one another. Otherwise, yeah, we have brotherly love. And we shake hands and we hug and all these things. But there's nothing, nothing like agape love. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you agape my Father and one another. And you can't do that if you're hung up with a lot of demonic things in your life. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So let's go talk about this, see. The spiritual purpose, see. Now look at this scripture here in Exodus. And this came to me this afternoon. When God spoke to Israel, they were positioned to go in and take the promised land, to take Canaan. And we know it was full of giants. And he said, I will not drive them out. Who? The giants. Look what God says. I'm not going to drive them out before you in one year. Now, certainly he's the one that did what needed to be done. I mean, he said, you go in, I'll give you the victory. So, But they had to go in. And see, that's another deception among the church and Christians is, hey, it's all done. Jesus did it all. No, he didn't say that to us. He said, I'm showing you the way. He's the way, the truth, the life. So he said, this is the way. So for this purpose was I manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And also, I cast out a demon so the kingdom can come to you. So there's so much more. I've, I've taught on that, I think, last Friday night. So I'll, I'll not drive them out from you before in one year. Lest the land become desolate, the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. Really. Little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. So what's he saying? He's saying, look, I, I can't get all your demons out in one ministry session. It, it's a walk. It's a lifestyle to begin to realize I'm in a war zone. I'm at war, and I can't win it in one day and one prayer session. I've engaged the enemy, and I'm going to fight until it's over. We're not going to give up. And I've been fighting and warring for almost 45 years. And the war's not over yet, <laughs> but it will be one day. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, uh, so there's a scripture. I didn't think it's one. So here you see the two hands of the, what we call the schizophrenic revelation from Frank and Ida Hammond. It's in their book, Pigs in the Parlor, which has been a, one of the best-selling, top-selling Christian books in the world at times. Did you know that? It really is. I know the publisher. It's in several languages, and I ask uh, every once in a while up at Impact Christian Books, you know, is it still selling? Yeah. The top seller. Why? Because it exposes what we need. Now, what we see here is the two hands of Ida B. Hammond, and uh, the Lord had her draw it out, and I've gone through this before. But what we see on each of the fingers is the names of demons. Now, maybe these, some of these demons have Greek names, Roman names, Persian names, whatever, and I think most of them do. I've, I've found out some of them. But I don't need their exact name. I just need to know what they're doing in my life. And then when I find out that they're doing this in my life, and you can see, making me feel rejected, making me feel inferior, making me feel angry, causing me, influencing me, maybe I shouldn't say making me, but influencing me to all of these things you see on my hand. And even though you can cover it up and go to church and smile and grin and shake hands and hug and all that, but all this stuff in us. And I can say myself personally that I had all of these in my life to one degree or another. Some 
of greater degrees, some of lesser degrees. But when you look at these names, many people, as I've taught this sometimes when I've traveled, they would come up to me and say, Brother, Brother, Brother Bell, I got everything on there. I'm glad you're honest. Most people won't be that honest. But I realized I was. And so we see these two hands, and really, the way they really were, as far as Ida Mae told me when she had that vision in Frank too, they were like this. And it had to be pulled apart, see? And you see the little guy down there at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> where am I pointing right? Yeah. <laughs> My hand disappeared. But anyway, down there, uh, it's not really there plainly. No, but the, the real self is down here under all this. And so I, when I did this, I, t I, I took that out. So uh, if you look at this and you see the hands, the hands represent what we do. It's our ministry. And the hand had to be, the thumb had to be anointed with a priest in the Old Testament. A toe, the, the thumb, and the right ear was anointed for the anointing, see. But the hand represents our ministry. And you see that in the Word of God. You're, 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 you're seeing a representation of the ministry that we have. And, of course, the five-fold ministry that's there. Okay. So let's look at the rejection side. And if you look down there, you see the prominent finger is rejection. And I'll not go into detail tonight about this. In fact, I might do a series and teach on this again. We have, I have teachings on YouTube, on our channels of even Frank teaching, uh, Frank Hammond teaching about this, but anyway. But no, notice this. Notice that over there where you have uh, uh, the ring finger, and that's the relationship finger. And so if you look at that finger, you can see most people get married because of a lust. And we begin to realize we think I'm in love, but I might, you're probably in lust. And it's not the same thing as agape love. It's not even the same thing as phileo love, which we call brotherly love. It's a different kind of a, a relationship and affection. See? So many have uh, affected by this. And then when you go on down the hand and see all the things down the hand, what you have here is, is things in people, in, maybe in yourself, and so forth, that really contribute to your feeling rejected. And your finger comes up, instead of pointing at others, we think, what's wrong with me? And you know, many people, this starts in many people's lives when they're a child, maybe two or three years old. They're not loved, they're not cared for properly, the dad's not there, and so forth. And a little child begins to, I've learned as I've ministered to them, and even to adults, that what's wrong with me? I, they, they didn't really love me. I've had, I've had folks that I've ministered to that were totally rejected by their father. In fact, in some cases, the father believed that they, the child wasn't even their own, that the mother had gone out and, and had a fling or something. And I had one brother, and he was rejected all of his life until he was like 50, 60 years old by his own dad because his dad said, this is not my son. <laughs> it's, quite, it's, it's horrible. And then another thing I've found in children is the fear of being abandoned. The fear of abandonment. Almost every child has this. And so when a divorce comes with their parents and they're only like three or four or five years old, it's devastating to a child. It affects their personality forever if they don't get free of the demons that come in at that point. So when these things happen, this opens the doors. It's a portal for demons to come in. And that's what deliverance is all about. Uh, uh, most people uh, are born not with godly parents, uh, and maybe I should say with not godly enough parents. If parents don't understand how demons affect their children and don't affect how they affect them personally, what hope do we have? 
Well, the hope we have is that once we wake up like I did, I was 40 years old, I said, my goodness, I've been in psychology, I've studied it, I've practiced it, and here I am, I didn't know anything. And I was so excited, and I found out that <laughs> most people weren't excited about it. They didn't even want to hear about it, so anyway, I'll not go there. On the other hand, see, we, we should say rejection, but actually the first thing that happens when you finally one day realize it, I, you know, I'm not loved, I'm not, I'm, I don't feel loved, I just feel rejected, I feel down, I, I've got fear, I've got this, I've got that. And again, see, you see the bitter root? You see the bitterness? That's what starts, is it? And finally one day, with all of these things, you can see the branches of bitterness, we'll not go into that either, but even murder. This is why we have family murders. One day, that demon gets hold, and it, I found out that the demon of murder, some of these demons will lay dormant for years. And the right trigger, the right button, and boom! A person does something, and they'll stand in court and say, I don't know why I did that. Well, I do. I do, see. And so, you look at all the branches there, but up there top, you see the bitterness, I mean the rebellion, and there's the rebellion. And that's on the other side. So now the finger is not pointing at me, it's pointing at you. What's wrong with you? I'm not going to listen to you. And look up there on the relationship finger. It's all about self. You, you withdraw into self and ego. And this is one of the problems that Job had, see? And that's one of the reasons the Lord said, I'm going to show you the children of I mean, the king, king of all the children of pride. What was it? His ego. I'm not going to that either. But on that side is witchcraft. On that side is uh, unteachableness. You know, a person can go so far and get so locked in that they're unteachable. They, they, they say, I'm an atheist. <laughs> That's a fool. That's what the Word says. Or that I'm agnostic. Or... Uh, I'm in my doctrine. There's as many so-called Christian people that are unteachable, almost as there is in the world. You can't teach them anything. I've got it. This is it. Uh, and so forth. And it's sad because that's a demonic spirit that's gotten into their life. And the sad thing it is, the Lord says, if they don't love the truth, which means it might not be exactly what their doctrine is, <laughs> I'm going to give them a strong delusion. And that's what happens when a person gets a strong delusion. It's basically over. And in fact, Frank Hammond and I used to talk about this. What do we do with people like that? Is there any hope for them? And uh, I, we couldn't think of anything because you can't get through to them. They've, they've locked themselves in. That's really, really sad. So anyway, just to give an overview of this and how important it is. I would say if you don't know about this, call us or look on our website. These two hands are on our website. Look under Study Helps and you'll find these two hands. And uh, or we'll send them to you, whatever we can do. So let's go on here. Let's talk about this spiritual process. Eh? The spiritual process is, is of course, a you come and get born again. And that doesn't mean you said a little prayer and got converted, but you are born again anew. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be before you can see the kingdom, before you can enter the kingdom. You can't go into the kingdom without being born again. And let me tell you this, when I ask that question, tell me about it. And so many people... I would say the majority of people that have come here for ministry haven't been born again. They've come out of denominational churches. They've said the little prayer, the four steps and so forth. They've gone to the altar and somebody's told them what to say and they've said it. And But the, when I was born again, my, changed, my life changed instantly and forever. Okay. I'll not go any further with that. So then you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That means all of the Holy Spirit. Speak in tongues. Prophesy. And, and that without tongues, 
you don't have it. And there's even a possibility some people get the wrong kind of tongues, but don't go there. If you ask the Lord for that, he will give you the baptism because it's a gift and you will speak in tongues and it'll be the right tongues, okay? Amen. So well, let's talk finally as we're talking about this schizophrenia and so forth. And so what the Lord showed, told the Hammonds, and I spent a lot of time talking with them about it. I spent, well, anyway, I said, these people that have these two hands like this are schizophrenics. Really? And Ida May uh, was praying. She said, Lord, what, what's a schizophrenic? She didn't know. And I'll tell you what, most psychologists and psychiatrists don't know either. They think they do. There's, I found out in my studies in psychology, there's almost 10, 12, 15 definitions of schizophrenia. Depends on whether you're young, young or, or Freud or whatever. I can name a lot of them, but anyway. So anyway, schizophrenia, she, the Lord said, it's a divided person who has the inability to give or receive agape. And I want to say agape. Anybody can give you some brotherly love. Anybody can do that stuff, you know. Or you, you, can, get, you can get all stirred up sexually. Yeah, wow, well, this is love. No, it's not. So the inability to give agape and receive agape, that's the only church there is. If you're not in a church, quote, unquote, where there's a flow of that, run and find one. Even if you have to move across the country. I would say that to you. And listen, brother, we're coming to the end of these end times. It's time to get your ducks in a row. As the Lord's saying to me, I'm going to close the door of the ark as in the days of Noah. Okay, so my brother, he says in James, Count it all joy, listen to this, when you fall into various trials. What? Temptations. Count it a joy. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. That's a big one. See, patience is, is an essence of a personality. See, so many people in our country, in most countries, not just our country, are impatient which means their personality is deficient. Patience is an important part of a godly personality. It is absolutely essential to a godly personality, but to any personality. With impatience, you got people uh, running around doing horrible things. Shh. Roads, shooting people, shooting the finger at people, uh, uh, getting upset and cursing and so forth. Okay, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Now, we've got people out there that don't believe that God tests our faith. I've had a brother <laughs> that went to, to one of the so-called faith churches, and he felt led to preach on that, teach on that, the testing of your faith. It was a faith church. And they absolutely went to the roof and would not, they canceled his tapes and everything and said no. And you're not coming back here. We're not going to hear this. Look what it says in God's Word. The testing of your faith produces patience. How do you get patience? You get your faith tested. Amen. You don't get it in it. You don't get patient. It doesn't drop out of the sky. I'm Jesus. I'm patient because Jesus was patient. No, it doesn't work that way. But let patience have its perfect work. Look at this perfect. Nobody's perfect, they say. That's a lie. Jesus was and said for what we were to be. And he made the way. Let me show you the way that you can be perfected. And deliverance is one of the keys on the way. That's why he came casting demons out of his people. Amen. Impatience causes wars. Mm -hmm. Countries go to war. Or impatience. You know that? That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's one of the key things that deliverance does in our life. 
You can't get there without getting the demons out of your life. And don't buy the lie that you can't have a demon because you've got the Holy Spirit. That's a lie, lie, lie. Let's go on. And this is James 1, the, the part of it. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Now, back there in Mark 16, it says you will take up serpents. What do you mean? Wisdom of the serpent is what we have out there. The same serpent that was in the garden. And that wisdom of the world is the carnal wisdom. And it's all a lie. It's all death. It's all without any kind of life in it. I could say more and more about it. So we need the wisdom of God and God's word. And so we have a whole book called a Proverbs that's about wisdom. And that's where we start. That, that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And so what he's saying here, there's two kinds of wisdom. There's worldly wisdom and there's godly wisdom. And if you've got both, look what it'll say. Follow with me, see. But let him ask in faith, what? For his wisdom. How do I live, Lord? How do I do this? How do I think? What do I do with my life? That's the wisdom. See? It says, but you've got to ask in faith, believing. And that's where you need patience. Sometimes God doesn't answer instantly. He'll make you wait to see if you're sincere. It's a test to make you perfect, as it says right here. This is such a key passage of Scripture. No doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. What wind? Ungodly wind. Wind of spirits. Evil spirits are like wind. Wind, spirit, that's what it means. So like the Holy Spirit comes like a wind, demons come like the wind. And most of them go out through our mouth, through our breath, <sighs> coughing out and so forth. That's right. So... Tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Do you see that? Why don't my prayers get answered? You're double-minded. See? Well, God promised he'd answer my prayer. Okay, you see? He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. We've had so many people pass through ministry that are unstable. You know, they come and get a little ministry, and then they go off, and they call back a year later, oh, hey, can you pray for me again, and so forth. Uh, you see what happened? Double-mindedness, see. Unstable in all his ways. Prayers aren't answered. And by the way, that double-minded, that word means two-souled. It's, it's a Greek word that means two-souled man. Wait a minute, you can't have two souls. Well, you can. The old man and the new man. And the old man's got to die. And, and basically, you've got to kill him yourself. <laughs> so the new man can come forth. So, so many Christians, their prayers aren't answered. Why? They're double-minded. And see, what I've seen a lot of people do, they have something hit them, and they get sick and so forth. And before even talking to the Lord, I'm going to the doctor. And they run to the doctor, or they run and, and get their biotics or antibiotics or whatever, and they start that and say, now I'm going to pray. It's too late. It's too late. You, you, you've gotten into double-mindedness. Now, what you can't do is throw your pills away <laughs> and get on your knees and maybe fast. But, but see how people use God. I was there. Now, is he, is he God or not? Does he keep his word? He says, I'm the Lord God that healeth thee. I'm Yahweh Rapha. Does he or not? And so double-mindedness has stalled out so the majority of believers. That's why it's not working. You, you pray double-minded, and that's what's, nothing's going to happen. See what the word says? Do you believe what this word says? Do you really believe what you're reading here? I do. Double-mindedness is miserable. You're unstable. Or you worry. 
Uh, you, you have anxiety, you have fear. You see the package of two hands on the rejection side down at the bottom is fear, fear, fear. Worry, worry, concern. No peace. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And you have to fight for it. You have to fight for it. Okay, so much for that, at least tonight. The damage of rejection. Real quickly here. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the first fruit of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering, something that came out of the cursed earth. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Before I go any further, I found out that everybody has an issue with anger toward the Lord because the prayer didn't get answered or your baby died, or the job didn't come through, or on and on we can go. And deep inside us, it's built into us. God is God, and he's in control of every, he's some. He's all-powerful. And uh, everything in my life is not out of hand. Okay, I'm not going to go further with that. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why has your countenance fallen? Hey, you see people go to the grocery store and meh, 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 and it's sad. You just don't see many happy people. Well, look what's going on. So if you do well, will you not be accepted? In other words, God said, hey, you, you can fix this. But he said, and if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And his desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now look at this. What's he saying? Sin is at the door? The door of what? And what is sin? I thought it was just something I, I, I do. But I love, uh, I hope, the Shocking Bible. It's an old Bible with a translated almost word for word in, from the Hebrew. So Yahweh said to Cain, which is in the, the Hebrew word, why are you so upset? Who has your faith? Why is your face fallen? Is it not thus? If you intend to do good, bear it aloft. But if you do not intend to do good, at the entrance, what, to your life, is sin, a crouching demon. That's in Hebrew. Sin is a crouching what? Demon. Toward you, it's, it's lust but you can rule over him. I'll say this. There's no demon in your life that hasn't been let in. Maybe as a child, you were born, You most of us were born with demons. It came in in the womb. Almost all. And certainly the first two or three years. And after that, as we grow more accountable, we let them in. We go play games video games and stuff, not realizing, hey, we, we just open ourselves up and said, we watch movies, we read books, we do things, and there's the door. How these demons get in? Well, you seem to enjoy this sort of thing. You see what I said? So, we open the doors, and sometimes like a little child, we don't even know. But a little child that's affected two, three years old, that's afraid why is this, where did, where did it get the spirit of fear? It had to come from somewhere. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Well, who has? And why do I feel rejected? Because some way I know that, well, like, like a little girl, Daddy didn't want a girl and I'm a girl. And they, you know, they, they got divorced. and Open doors, open doors, open doors, see? Uh, and the demon crouching. And see, if you don't even know, they're going to come in. So, without deliverance, you can't get very far in your personality. And certainly not very far in your walk as a believer. 
because you've got you've got sabotage creatures inside you. These are creatures. These are entities like people. They have a mind. They have a will. They can speak. They can influence and so forth. Don't ever doubt that. That's how Jesus treated them. If the Son of God came and believed in demons and cast them out, what are we doing? We can't just ignore them. We see what's happening. Look at our look at our government in Washington D.C. See what the demons are doing in almost everybody there. I don't want to go any further with that. So we're talking about here uh, about you know deliverance from double-mindedness and from rejection, see, and uh, the internal influence is. And I, this is just kind of abbreviated. Self-analysis. You're always analyzing yourself. Analyzing yourself. Self-judgment. Oh, boy, I'm no good. I'm no good. I'm no good. That, that, that. Self-blame. You know, oh, boy. Guilt. Even condemnation. Self-justification. Well, you know, I did the best I could. Baloney. Baloney. That's not the best you could do. Probably the best you can do is with a demon. External blame. Bitterness toward others. Rebellion <laughs> toward the law, any rules or anything, especially spiritual leadership. Witchcraft. You, you can't operate. You can't operate without the Holy Spirit except in witchcraft. So when people step out of their place, you're, you've opened yourself up. Oh, I got power. I can do this. I can do that. I can sell cars. Can you? How do you do that? Well, I learned how to close. You learned how to use witchcraft and manipulation to get people to do things. I was there. I know. A wounded spirit. A who can bear it, says in the word. A deep rejection of, of that woundedness inside. And, it, and sometimes it even hurts physically. And then, of course, the inability to receive love. You know, I, I had to learn with, with some of the things I've been dealing with in my life as far as walking and so forth. I've, I had to learn to let people help me. And I didn't like that. But <laughs> it's been the best thing. I thank the Lord for it. How much I need the brother. Hallelujah. And how much I need my wife. Praise God. Bitterness. Resentment. There's the branches that I showed you. Resentment toward others. Anger. See, bitterness is the root of all of this. These are the branches. It, you will not get rid of your anger until you deal with your bitter root. Memory recall. We remember <laughs> things you don't want to remember. Especially, you hurt me I know that, wasn't that 30 years ago, hon? Yeah. Unforgiveness. Some people hold that, oh, I've forgiven, I've forgiven. And I, I listen to how they say that. And when somebody says, I've forgiven, I've forgiven, I've called people and said, would you forgive me? Yes, I, I've forgiven you, I've forgiven you. I know they haven't. I can tell by the tone of the voice. They're bitter toward me. They, and I didn't hurt them. I didn't hurt them. Well, they did get hurt but for the wrong reason. Retaliation, where people get back at you. They do things. They pray against you. I've had people curse me, send curses to me. I've had other brothers that were hit so hard with curses of witchcraft that they, were, they got sick and almost died until they found out, wait a minute. This is real stuff. Satan has supernatural power. Hatred. Violence, murder. We mentioned that. I'll not spend any more time there. Rejections, accusation. Like the spirit of Cain. Mad at God, see. The spirit of Cain. Huh. The Absalom spirit toward the parents. The terrible, terrible spirit. Corvus rebellion. They court 
for leadership. You may not have that thing about God. Most everybody, almost everybody does. I, I think everybody does to deal with it. We see the absent spirit all over the place. And our government is feeding it. Look, if you want, you, if you want to change your gender, go to California. They'll protect you. Your parents can't even touch you if you go to California. What? And then, of course, rebellion toward leadership. The disrespect that I've experienced toward the leadership the Lord's given me. I've learned to forgive it and to flow with it, but one of the weaknesses of the, Lord, of the church is rebellion toward leadership. Hey? And look what happened to Korah. What a judgment. The earth opened up and swallowed up his whole family. And everything he owned. Kaboom. That's how the Lord feels about that. But of course, I know the church is a mess. I know. Find some place else where there's godly shepherding and leadership. It's, it's essential for all of us. And then the, what I call the Judas spirit. Pride. Judas, see, I think, I know a better way. Jesus is not doing it right. We need to get this army going and attack these Romans and get them out of here. That was the Jewish mentality. And that's why Judas betrayed Jesus. One of the reasons, I think, that you can see that. Okay. All right, let's look at the release and the relief. God is blameless. He's blind. He's perfect. He's love. He's love. He's agape. He is agape. He doesn't just do agape. He, he is agape. It's hard to believe. Hard to believe. But see, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> and he's a forgiving God. And he doesn't just forgive. He says, I forget it. Don't bring it back to me. I've been guilty of that. Don't tell me that again. That's a demon spirit called memory recall that makes you remember these things so you can feel guilty and feel like I'm mad at you and you can't receive my forgiveness. So there's the God of grace. I just learned about grace a few months ago. And if you want to do a study, study do a study on grace. You do it. You do quit waiting on somebody to teach you. Get before the Lord, open your Bible, and let the Holy Spirit teach you. He's the teacher, Jesus said. And I could talk more even about self-deliverance, but I'll not do that. So there's deliverance and healing that He's provided for us through the cross and through the beatings. It wasn't just sitting on the cross, it was before the cross. They beat him, they spit at him, they cursed him, so forth. And by his stripes, the blood that came out of his back and the blood that came out of the thorn pricks on his head are all a part of our deliverance and our healing. And so, our loving God. You see, so many have not gotten there. And this is the essence of what this is all about. The gospel is all about. What's the good news of the gospel? I'm saved and going to heaven. Meanwhile, I'm going to live in hell, I guess. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Today's the day. It's for now. And we're given the opportunity to prepare ourselves. That doesn't mean you're not going to be saved and go to heaven. But it does mean you're probably not going to be in the place you could be. And it also, the Lord has showed me, it means that there's more to be done when you get there. <laughs> and so he's given us a wonderful, wonderful thing. The ability to cast out demons. The authority to do it over all the power of the enemy. Principalities, powers, rulers. To deal with this stuff. And not only that, to get the stuff out of us so we can be a whole, loving, 
mature, perfect, perfect person. Oh, really. So, Father, I pray tonight, as uh, I shared this word a little tonight, and what you showed me about this ministry, I thank you for it, Lord. I know a lot of people curse it, everything they do. They hate it. They don't want to do it, and so forth. I, Lord, I know you're merciful, and I know you forgive. You're a good God. I thank you for what it's done in my life. And, and those that have received Lord, the, ch the changes in lives that I've seen. Thank you, Father. And I know that deliverance and the casting out of demons was essential. Amen. So I ask you, Lord, open the eyes of your people. Open their ears to hear. Give them understanding about the importance, the power, and the wonder of being able to deal with these things and get them out of our lives. Lord, I pray for everyone in the sound of my voice that they be blessed and favored by the Holy Spirit to come into the fullness of the truth. Like you, Jesus. Like you. Praise you and thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share your word. Amen. Got one question. Okay, one question. How do we pray for torn spirits in our children if we are estranged? <laughs> you just, uh, they always hear they've got demons, the torn children, and who tore? Parents tear them. <laughs> Family tears them. So they need deliverance, absolutely. And the key is the dad, if he's available. They're grown children. Yeah. Grown children? Yeah. Well, that's a different different program. They need to seek the Lord, see. They can get free. If they realize they're torn, anyway, that's the problem we have. The failure of the church. Because I every every week, you, you know, people call us, I can't get help. So I, I, all I can say is, Lord, you know, God bless you folks. Pray and ask for wisdom if there's anything you can do. And God will lead you. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you about that. And he will. He will. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I'm trying to do a better follow-up on your questions on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not an expert on YouTube but I've got some folks to help. And so I apologize that we haven't responded uh, to a lot of things, but we're, we're trying to do better, okay? You see the phone number here on the screen, and you see uh, the other information about our website, our email, and contact us. We're here to help you. And even to the point, in some cases, to, to get on Skype with you or something, WhatsApp or whatever, okay? Praise the Lord. So God bless all of you. And peace be to you. Amen.